Hey everyone, it's Nate here with the most common data science interview question by Facebook. It's the most commonly tested concept on their coding interviews, especially in the beginning rounds. I previously posted a video on five coding concepts that companies test for in data science interviews in 2021. So what I want to do now is actually solve the five questions that will test your understanding of these concepts. So we're going to start with one question first. It's a question by Facebook, like I said before, and then in future videos, I'll solve the rest. So let's see what this question is all about. If you like content like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be releasing more interview questions by your favorite companies. I'll see you after the transition. Okay, so here is the question by Facebook and also the first concept that we'll be covering. So the question reads, return the share of monthly active users in the United States. Active users are the ones with an open status in the table, okay? And so the concepts that are gonna be covered in this question are essentially categorizations, aggregations, and ratios, all in one question. And so by categorizations, what I mean are case statements in SQL or the merge function in Python. And then by aggregations, I mean functions like like count or sum or average. And obviously by ratio, I mean that we are gonna have a numerator and a denominator and our output is gonna be between zero and one. So this is Facebook's most common and favorite question to ask in the beginning rounds. I've actually seen several different versions of this question that all kind of test for the same concepts. So if you do end up interviewing for Facebook, you'll get a question similar to this. Okay, so let's talk about approach. For every problem, for every question, I like to attack the problem in the same way each and every time. Especially on an interview where you're kind of nervous and a little bit stressed out, you can always rely on the same framework to calm your mind down and then work through the problem. So my four step approach. The first one is to explore the data and understand how it behaves. The second step is to identify the columns that are required to answer the question. The third step is to visualize the output. And then the last step, the fourth step is to code your solution in increments and test things out. So let's use this four step approach to solve this problem. Okay, so the first step is to explore the data and see how it behaves. So if I click on this preview button here to look at the data, I get a pretty simple table of user ID, the name, the status, and the country. So I would assume that this user ID column are all unique users, meaning there are no duplications between user ID. But the fact that I have a status column that can either be open or closed, I actually might have some duplication in the user ID column. To test this out, we can use a simple aggregation and a group by. So all we're going to do is select user ID and then get a count of the number of rows where user ID is duplicated for the country USA because the question just wants us to return the share of monthly active users for the United States. All right. And then obviously we want to group by user ID here, right? So if I run this code here, what I get in the output is basically a unique set of user IDs and uh, the count of all ones. So I know for a fact that all of these user IDs are unique throughout this data set for the US. So now that I understand the data set, let's go to the second approach step, which is to identify the required columns that are needed to solve this problem. So taking a look at the question again, and taking a look at the columns that I have, I know that I basically need three columns. I need the user ID column because we're gonna be counting users. I need the status. So if I go back to this preview, I need the status here, the status column, because I need to filter for users that have an open status. And then I need the country because I'm only considering users in the United States. So these are the three columns that I need in my solution. Okay, so now the third step to visualize your output. Why is this important and what does this mean? This step is important because we need to understand what the end result is actually going to look like. This will help you design and organize your code. This question is actually pretty simple though. It's just asking you to return the share of monthly active users.
numbers. So we're gonna basically have one column, one number in the output. So we basically want a ratio of all active users divided by all users, right? So this is relatively simple, but there are some constraints uh, as you see in this question here. So we need to work with these constraints to design our solution. So here's what we need to do. We need to first filter for US users only. From this filtering, we then need to filter for users with the status open and then count the number of users there. We then need to count the number of users in the US regardless of status. Then to get the ratio, we take the number of status open users and divide that by total number of users. Okay, so this brings us to approach number four, which is code in increments. So coding in increments is exactly what you think it means. You're gonna write some code, you're gonna run it, and then you're gonna check its output. And then you're gonna write more code, run the whole thing, check the output, and you're gonna rinse and repeat until you've solved the problem. So why do this in increments and not just write the entire solution? Because you wanna make sure that the logic that you applied in that small amount of code that you just wrote is applied correctly to your query, to your entire solution. So you want to check that and if it's correct, then you want to write more code, implement another logical statement, another business rule, and then check whether or not that's implemented correctly. And then you just do that until the entire problem is solved. Okay, so we basically have the approach all written down here. So what we're gonna do is just basically code in steps. So let's do the first step, filter for US users only. So this is relatively easy. As you see, we're gonna use the country column here and we know that US is, um, the value is USA. So if we then run this code here, we see that all the users that we have are from the US and we see that their statuses are both open or closed. So that's exactly what we're looking for. So then the next step is to count the number of users with status equals open, all right? So in order to do this, we're gonna have to implement a case statement and that's gonna look like this. So here we're gonna be using the status column and picking out open values. And then if a, a row or a user has a status equals to open, what we're gonna do is count the user ID. Otherwise, we're gonna have a null in that place instead. And then we're gonna apply the count function. And so if I run this query, we get three active users. This is basically the numerator to our ratio of active users. So again, what Facebook is testing for is your ability to filter data right here in the where clause and then categorize data. So this case statement, so picking out users with status equals open and then aggregating all of that. So basically counting the number of users from your categorization. So all of these concepts are being tested all at once. So now the next step is to count the total number of users because we need a denominator for our ratio. That's relatively easy as well. We're just gonna be counting the number of rows and then naming that column total users. So if I run this code, I should get two columns. I get active users, three, and total users, six. So I know my ratio is basically gonna be 50% or 0.5. So after verifying this, we have our numerator and our denominator. The last step is to basically take the numerator and divide that by the denominator, the count of total users. So what I'm gonna do is just delete this part of the code here, divide the numerator by the denominator and name this column ratio active users. Right here we have an integer with this count and another integer, right? It's three divided by six. That's gonna give us either a zero or a one. So if I actually run this code, I'll show you what it gives us. It gives us a zero, right? Because an integer is being divided by an integer. We need to basically turn one of these numbers into a float or a decimal in order to get a ratio that's between zero and one. So what I can do is just cast this count as a float. And now if I run this code, I get 0.5. So if I check the solution, the solution is correct. So there's another way to solve this problem. So if we go back to the previous way I wrote this query here, we have essentially active users and then total users here. So let me just run this code again. We should get two columns, three and six. So that's exactly what we're expecting. And then we just put the query into a subquery and we take the ratio at the top here, right? And so if we run this code, we get 0.5 just like we got last time around. So if we check the solution, the solution is also correct. So then the question you might ask is why write it like this? This is a longer way to, to solve the problem. The answer to that is that some people find this way to be more organized and more logical. So you can actually debug what's going on here and know that everything's correct before you actually take the ratio itself. 
right? And so you're not just refactoring any of the code, you're just applying more logic on top of pretty clean and polished code here. Also, the second reason is sometimes in an interview, you're talking with the interviewer and you're guiding them along uh, your logic and your way of thinking. And so it makes sense that, you know, you are basically talking the interviewer through all of the logic in the subquery here. And then as the last step, you just make this a subquery and then you divide um, the numerator with the denominator and then you're done. And so it's a logical step to take when you're guiding the interviewer. The only problem is that it's not very efficient code compared to the last method or the last solution that we wrote up. So what you wanna do at the end of the interview is basically show the interviewer that there's a more efficient way of writing the solution. So as you can see here, to solve this problem, you need an understanding of how to categorize data, how to take an aggregate, how to aggregate data, and how to take a ratio, all in one question. But the tricky part isn't even those three technical concepts being tested. It's actually, how to organize your code so that you can guide the interviewer or guide somebody along the way. And then the second one is a data type conversion so that you get a ratio, you get an output that's between zero and one. A lot of times people actually forget this because they're out of practice or too nervous during an interview. So these are the little nuances you're gonna need to know in addition to understanding these three technical concepts. So I hope that all makes sense. The more practice you have with these types of questions, the quicker you're gonna be able to pick up the patterns and implement the solution. So I'll be doing more of these interview style questions so that everybody gets practice. We can discuss all the different types of concepts that are being tested during these interviews. So all I have to say is keep at it and I'll see you at the next video.